I'm going to uh, I'm going to reach with a minimum of editorial comment, uh, Lori Gottlieb's uh, short bio. She is the author of the national bestseller Stick Figure, a diary of my former self, um, which was the best book from the American Library Association. She comments on NPR for Listen to All Things Considered. You also may have heard her on Weekend Edition and Marketplace for American Life. Or if you read the New York Times, the LA Times, uh, Glamour Red Book, Slate, Atlantic Monthly, Time, People, Hotel, etc. Um, you have seen her articles, read her articles, and uh, also she wrote a book with uh, Kevin Blyer at the Daily Show called I Love You, Nice to Meet You, a guy and girl who can bow down and fuck them up. Um, and her essays are clear, and now I want you to listen to these things in about this. This time, Dr. In, screwed over skin, the modern Jewish girl died to guilt, mortified to be a book of angst, or angst, depending on which side of the Fire, fire, tales of the can, cancel, downsized, and dismissed. So what I get is, if you have um, an eating disorder, or you're fired, or you're guilty, or you're mortified, or there is, or for that matter, if you're searching, this is the person whose expertise <laughs> can covers all manner of modern books, which is really, I must say, um, which makes her, I would say, just about the most marketable speaker that one could imagine to modern males to set all of us. Um, and I am not surprised that all of you have come to hear her and to hear her wisdom. The, the article that um, spurred us to invite uh, Lori Gottlieb was an article that appeared in the New York Times recently in which she talked, um, and uh, we're going to hear in a moment how this article came to be, in which she talked about um, settling for Mr. Good Enough or Mrs. Good Enough, perhaps, possibly, we'll see uh, about that. Um, but in any case, we are delighted that she is able to come and speak to us tonight. The, um, the multi-talented and, uh, and almost uh, omniscient on Modern Hills um, reporter and writer, Lori Gottlieb. So first of all, how did this article come to be? All right. I was going to say, I, I sound very confused by all of those uh, acknowledgments, and actually, it's the first of all, I'm confused. How did the article come about? Um, it was kind of by accident, actually. I um, was going to my editor to pitch my next article. And um, I had just been on a really bad date the night before. And um, my editor was married. Was married. <laughs> and, um, and he and I started talking about uh, my bad dates and, and all the things that went on. And, uh, you know, basically, the last article I'd written for the magazine was about how I decided to have a baby on my own. So, first of all, break up with my boyfriend. Um, she on the by going on online sperm banks at night. And, and everyone on David, okay? It was, it was, it was just looking for the sperm. And, um, and I broke up with him, and then I had a baby on my own because I thought that I was going to have a baby and then find true love later. And all I can say about that is ha 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 ha. So, um, so I, I started talking to my editor about um, you know that situation, and that was sort of a two-hour conversation. And then I had to get home to the babysitter, of course, because I'm a single mom. And um, and he said, you know what, you only have to talk for other ideas. This is actually a great idea. You should just write this story. And I'm just curious. I, I don't mean to be. Well, yes, I do. We <laughs> <laughs> thought the baby was going to be a lord. Was that the idea? Don't dodge the track. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I, you know, it was not ideal. You know, it, it was not like I said, oh, this is the ideal way to make a baby. And it was that, I thought, you know what, I don't want to get too old to have a baby. Uh, if I meet someone now, I want to know them for a while before we were going to get married. And I don't, and what if I don't meet them tomorrow? And I thought, you know what, I've heard about the stories of a lot of women who have babies on their own and, and that kind. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a baby and I'm going to hold out for this elusive, you know, divine spark. You live in New York? I live here. You live here. Okay. Yes. So did you find that living in big cities makes it more difficult or less difficult? I've never lived in a small city, so I couldn't tell you, I can only tell you my friends' experiences, and everybody complains. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if there's people that are complaining. Um, because, I mean, part of, the, part of the attempt here is to create smaller communities, whether you divide them up by 
pain or interest or whatever is because big communities actually seem to make it very difficult. When people, for example, come to Friday Night Live, one of the reasons why we now have all these after events, which for years I was here, there are too many people I can't meet anymore. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, there are so many people who are single, so they must, because we don't have a community, we don't have a way of organically meeting people. And isn't it also, and this goes now to the substance of the article, isn't it also that there was a time when the expectation was so powerful that you just married someone, essentially? Um, right, and there was also sort of the, the community, the cultural standard, or the cultural norm, that if you were 30 and you weren't married, what was wrong with you? Get moving. You know, and now it's like, well, yeah, mom, but you know, like, you know, none of your friends are married, so it's okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> and do you think, do you think this is, I mean, to what do you attribute it other than the, the lack of community? I mean, isn't this also in part the dilemma that women are in because of professionalism, because of school, because you because you always you want you want to assume that um, that getting married or having children ought not to limit choices that you want to make in other areas of your life that men have to make and it doesn't seem to limit that. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's the reason there are so many single women at this age is because of their selfish and our careers. I actually think that the fact that we're really ambitious and we're doing really interesting things with our lives gives us the opportunity to be really interesting men. So I don't think that that's the issue. Um, I think that the issue is that we are holding out for the best. We, that's sort of our culture. And, you know, we watch back in the city and we watch friends and we watch all these shows. And we read all these novels, and, and everybody read these novels and saw these other the comedies and all of that before, but it was sort of like back then, it doesn't apply to me. Now, for some reason, people are saying, oh, but I want the big lover. I remember, remember the movie Ghost? Yeah. I remember the, the end of that movie. I don't know if you've not seen the movie. I'm not exactly going to spoil it for you, but maybe I will. At the end of that movie, Patrick Swayze, who, um, who goes off to heaven in, in like a spectral presence. And I thought to myself as I was leaving, I pity her next boyfriend. Because I'm not confused. I've been angelic, Patrick Swayze. But so did I, everyone who saw the movie. And you say, well, how do you agree? They're right there with the guy next to them and saying, you know. Thank <laughs> you. 